Okay, so jQuery lesson number two. If you missed lesson number one, I'm going to put the link in the description. You're definitely going to want to see that. I'm also going to get a link on the screen here. You should see that if you're not on mobile. Let's move forward. So in the last lesson, I showed you how to do jQuery actions um, or methods as they're called. Uh, one I didn't show you is the HTML method. So if I go btn1, let's get grab button one. I can do .html and I can actually change what's in the HTML code. So right now the code is just that button one text. So now it's called my button. That's kind of fun. So what I actually got to do is I got to rewrite what's inside of that HTML element. Let's look at panel one here. That's this guy, this div. Um, and what I get to do here is I can actually rewrite the entire inside of it. So I can go, if I do panel one, HTML my panel. So there you go, all the elements are gone that were inside, and now the only thing inside of it is text that says my panel. Uh, I can even add new tags. Bold, not bolt. This isn't too good of an idea to do very much of, but you can do a little bit. You can add a tag or two, and it's not considered a bad practice. Okay, so we know how to do jQuery methods. So let's listen to what the user's doing and do methods when the user interacts with our page. So what we're going to do is, let's give an example, when we click on button 1, I want this panel to show and hide. So let's go button 1, we start with the thing we're wanting to listen to, and the method is called on, and then we give it a event name. This is a JavaScript event name. So I'm going to go on click. The first, these are called arguments that I'm passing here. The first thing I'm giving it is listen to the click event. And then I'm going to go comma, and then I'm going to give it my function, which you'll recognize from up here. Open, close parentheses, open, close curly braces. So anything in between those curly braces now will fire whenever the click event takes place. So now I can go, I'm going to add the parentheses, or the semicolon to be a good guy. Now I can go panel one, hide. Actually, I'll just go toggle. That way it'll show and hide, whatever it isn't. So when I click on button one, it's going to run this function and it's going to toggle panel. Hey, would you check that out? Let's actually make that slide toggle. This is something you'll use probably. Yeah, I'll make it a slide toggle at 200. There you go. Slides and is beautiful. Let's make it when I click on the panel, I actually want it to hide that panel itself. So when you click on panel one, there you go, it's gone. Now I can't actually click it to toggle it back, so I have to hit the button to, well, I took away my button one now, didn't I? <laughs> so I can't actually bring it back without refreshing my page, um, but that's how you would do that if you wanna get rid of things. I could make an X button inside of here. So when you click that X button, it tells panel one to go away. So I can actually make it fade out. That might make a little more sense. Click, and it's gone. And that's a lovely way of doing things. You'll notice I changed the panel. I didn't remove the whole column, which is why those things are sitting there. So um, let's go into a little bit more clever usage of this. So let's say we add button one. Let's assign these buttons to each one of these panels. BTN1, I think is what they're called. BTN1, panel one, fade out. There we go. I'm going to go button two, you're going to do panel two, I'm going to do button three does panel three, and button four does panel four. There you go. So now each one of these should go away, go away, go away, go away, come back. All right, did I just do fade out? Yep. Let's do fade toggle. Do my nifty sublime text multiple cursors there. There you go. Any order. Now I actually have a pretty living, breathing page. Nice. Let's actually change this event from click to mouse over. Something you might want to do sometimes. And it's going to toggle them each time. Now I get to do some fun, crazy, you know, everybody's got to do that when they make something like that, right? So there you go, and mouse over. I can make it to where all it does is fade out, and you have to click to bring it back in. Mouse over, it's going to fade out. I'm going to copy and paste all of these. You'll notice it's pretty easy to get a mess of jQuery. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to clean this up because this is already kind of too much. We don't really want to do it this way. 
Um, and so then when I click, I'm going to tell it to fade back in. So now I have four mouse overs. On mouse over, we're going to fade out. And when we click, we're going to fade back in. Fade out, fade out, fade out. Click will bring me back in. There we go. That's a super fun way of doing things. Uh, what I can also do is I'll teach you one more method here. So let's go on click function on button one click panel one we are actually going to go find and now we get to look inside of panel one what I want to do is panel one body panel body this is what I want to change here I'll go panel actually I won't do find I'll just go panel one dot panel body and I'm going to change that HTML to my new panel content so now I click on that my panel content will change to my new panel content. Nice. Very good. So that is pretty much how you listen to events and then tell your page to do stuff. One cool thing you could do is I could have all these panels hidden by default, which I could do, you know, with a CSS class. Um, or in this case, I'll just make it, I'll do it the wrong way here and go display none. So now all these panels are going to be hidden by default. And then the button will activate them. You'll get to show them. So button one on click, panel one dot show. Ah, let's go and toggle. So on button one click, panel one will toggle. So they're all hidden. There you go. And now I can copy and paste that to button two. If you're using Sublime Text, by the way, Apple D is what gives you multiple cursors like that. There you go. So now they're all going to toggle whenever I hit these. So that's kind of your intro to listening to jQuery events. The next video, we're going to show you how to clean up your jQuery because there's no way you actually need to do this when they all do the exact same thing. I'm going to show you how to clean that up, how to reuse some stuff in jQuery, and just how to make it a little bit more professional. So catch that video next, and have a good day.